and welcome to today's vlog. Now, as you know, this channel was always first and foremost a disability channel. Um, and it's been a little while since I've talked sort of specifics of disability and things that might be connected to that. So today I am going to be talking about catheters. Um, so if you follow my channel or if you know me, you will know that I had surgery back in May. Uh, I had bladder and bowel surgery to make my bladder bigger and for a little while I had to have a couple of indwelling catheters. Uh, those have now been removed and I am back to my old intermittent catheters. So today I'm going to just be telling you a little bit about them, giving you a little bit of information. Um, I'm going to show you how I changed the bags, how I flushed them, um, how I switched from day to night bags, just a little bit of information about what it was like to have indwelling catheters basically. Um, so probably this isn't going to be useful for a lot of people <laughs> but um, chances are at some point someone you know or yourself, someone that you're close to, may end up with a catheter of some kind. Watching this video will help sort of overcome the stigma that can be around these sorts of things and will also give you a little bit of information and might help you through something, who knows. Hopefully uh, somebody will find this video and find it helpful. That's, that's all I want really. <laughs> uh, so first of all, the catheters I use and have used since I was 15 are just normal intermittent catheters. All catheters, whether they're indwelling, permanent, whatever, they all come in lots of different sizes, uh, lots of different lengths. Uh, so depending on your anatomy or how you're going to use the catheter, there's lots of choice out there that can help you and your healthcare team uh, find the best type of catheter for you. Like I said, they come in different lengths, um, different thicknesses or widths, I suppose. Yeah, there are a lot of options out there for you depending on your needs and your anatomy. So don't worry about that. So the catheters I use are a hydrophilic coated catheter. That means you, but basically when you get them wet, they become lubricated, which makes them easier to use. They are CHFR 10 by 3.3 millimeters female. So this is what I use currently. And this is what I've used since I was 15. They are single use. They look like this. You get about 30 in a box. This is the end that goes into your bladder and this is the end that it comes out of. And also this is the end that if you're gonna do a flush or anything like that, this is the end that that goes in. So all catheters kind of look like this. They have sort of a clear tube, a little bit on the end like this where the pee comes out. And then in the very top, they have uh, little holes for the wee inside your bladder to be able to drain out. So a lot of catheters will look like this. Um, indwelling, and suprapubic catheters, sort of more permanent ones, will look a lot different. They often have like a balloon that is filled with a solution on the end, which is what helps them stay inside you. Um, yeah, there are lots of different ways to catheterize. I don't know them all. I'm certainly not an expert. I can only really tell you about what I do. So if you need sort of further information, I'll link a couple of resources below, but it's always worth talking to your healthcare team to see what the best thing for you is and if you have any sort of questions. So this is just me telling you basically what I did when I had the indwelling catheters and what I do with the intermittent catheter. So like I said, they're single use, they're sterile, they're sealed in a packet. So you open the packet slightly, I'm not going to do it because it's sterile and it won't be sterile if I open it, but you open the packet, you put some water in and then you peel off this tab and you can stick that to like the surface to the bathroom wall so that you can pull it in and out 
of the packet easily and then once you've put some water in here it makes the coating on the catheter lubricated which makes it easier for the catheter to go into your bladder so yeah brilliant in basic terms some people catheterize through openings that have been made in other parts of their body uh, so either maybe near their belly button in their stomach uh, in their pubic area or via the urethra which is how I catheterize. I'm sure this is TMI for some of you but I think it's important stuff that somebody might need to know about so yeah. Basically when I need to pee I use one of these, I pee, I throw it away, I'm done. Peed, lovely. And this is what I've used since I was 15. I have tried a couple of other types of catheter like this including one that sort of was like half the size of this and came in a pre-filled plastic tube that extended so made it a bit longer to use it and the idea was that they were pocket sized i never really got on with them but i know other people that have found them brilliant um some people dependent on where your bladder is inside your body you may need a much longer catheter you may need a much shorter catheter like i said if and when you come to have to catheterize in some way especially intermittent catheterization your urology team will talk you through this they will decide help you decide what's the best choice for you so please don't worry that you're going to be going out here blind you can't just go into a shop and buy one and away you go it has to sort of all be done properly so don't worry about being left out in the dark in the uk these are available on prescription my gp has to prescribe them and because of the nature of my disability i actually get free prescriptions um, if you regularly use a catheters or you have uh, catheter bags, indwelling catheters, all that kind of thing, it is worth looking into whether you can get free prescriptions because the chances are you can and that will help bring costs down a lot for you. My catheter prescription is managed by a third party company. So when I am about to run out, so when I'm about down to about one or two boxes, I email the third party company mine are called script easy i tell them what i need and then they organize it on my behalf with the gp so i don't have to worry about it um usually it arrives all my stuff arrives quite quickly it is dependent on how quickly the gp gets the prescription back to them but generally uh, my prescriptions arrive on my doorstep delivered by a very nice man from fedex within a week so it's a really easy process for me personally here. Uh, obviously it can depend, your, the service you're going to get can depend on what locality, what uh, clinical commissioning group you're in, uh, so bear that in mind as well. But like I said, somebody will talk you through all of this, you're not going to be going in blind, so don't panic. Next up I'm going to show you how I changed the indwelling catheter bags that I had. I had a suprapubic catheter and a urethral catheter. They were both indwelling. They were, mine were temporary, but usually these ones are permanent. They are inserted into your body. And the idea is that they're changed every so often. And whilst they're in, you don't need to worry about them. They have a bag on the end that collects the urine. Uh, you change those bags at night to a bigger bag so that the bag doesn't overflow. And that's it really. I'm also going to show you what a flip flow looks like and how a flip flow works. That's it really. So I, will, I have stressed and I will say it again, this is just my personal guide on how I did it. I'm not out here to educate. Um, I'm not a medical professional in any way, shape or form. So this is just hopefully to give you an idea of what it's like and if this is something you're considering or if a catheter of some kind is something that you may need to have, hopefully this video will put you at ease, showing you how easy it is to use them. So yeah, like I said, it's not designed to be medically professional vlog of any kind. So before I started, I washed my hands with soap and water and then once I was sat down and ready to go, yes, I am sat on the toilet, I used alcohol rub to wash my hands again. So this is the bag that is attached to me all the time. That green bit is a clip that turns a tap, the tap basically on and off so the urine can come out. 
that bag at night is then attached via a long tube to a much bigger night bag. Yes, that is my wee. So first things first, we close the tap so no more urine can come through the bag. This just saves you getting covered in your own pee. And then you detach the uh, bag from the long tube. You just pull it out. Sometimes it is a little bit tricky, it sticks. But you just pull uh, one bag out from the other. I always make sure the tap is closed again before I drop that down so that the floor doesn't get covered in pee. Uh, and then that bag has been completely detached. There's a little cap that comes with it that goes back on again, just to sort of try and keep it all contained and a little bit less messy. I personally like to roll the tube up a bit like this just to make it a little bit easier to use. And then I fold the bag in half so that the pee isn't gonna just pour straight out of the bottom there. And then it has this snap off cap on the bottom that comes up. Once it's emptied either into the sink or the toilet, I then fold the bag up uh, sort of as small as I possibly can and I wrap the bag around the tubes just to make it all a little bit tidy because this does create a lot of waste and mess. Um, once that's all bundled up, I pop it into just a normal standard nappy bag. Um, you can buy these quite cheaply and also my prescription service pres provides these for free. And I just tie the bag up and that can just go in the normal waste. So that's the night bag off and just the day bag left ready for the day. Next up is a bag change. So I had to do this about every seven days. You take one old day bag off, you put a new day bag on and you're good for a week. I start by getting the bag ready and opening the packet just to make it a little bit easier for myself. I then use a wipe to give the end of the catheter tubing a bit of a wipe just to make it a little bit more clean, a little bit sterile. So I give that a good wipe. Like this. And then what I tend to do is bend the top of the clear tube that's on the right of the screen there. I bend it a little bit so that pee doesn't uh, spurt out all over me and then slowly I wiggle back and forth to pull the two tubes apart so the white nozzle part comes away from the clear part where the orange bit is and it just comes off like that and then that's the old day bag ready to be discarded so I put that to one side while I put the new bag on so this is the end of the catheter the rest of that is inside my bladder the new bag is ready to go on, so the white nozzle part just goes inside this part here. And as you can see, the bags are clear. They have measurements on them so you can see how much pee you have produced. And then you push the white part of the nozzle into the clear part, push it quite firmly. It will sort of click. A couple of times and it, once it's in it's secure and airtight nothing is going to come out and there's the new day bag on next up is flushes I had to do these six times a day for each catheter I use OptFlow S and they're 50 mils they just come in a prepackaged tube like this so I always got that ready to start I then went through the process of cleaning the nozzles on the end like I did for a bag change uh, just to make sure everything's clean so I just use a wet wipe, give it a good clean and then once that is done I detach the tubing from the bag. Uh, because you need the flush to go directly into the tube so like before I just sort of grip it quite carefully so that nothing comes out ease the tube back and forth to pop that out so that I can use the flush and then the bag goes to one side I don't change the bag when I flush it's just a flush and then the bag goes back on so I pop the bag to one side and then I can start the flush so I pop the lid off the Optiplo to get that ready uh, the lid is a little bit tricky sometimes and then I just pop that to one side for a minute and then I hold a little piece of tissue under the opening to the clear tube 
uh, just to protect myself from getting wet because it can get a little bit messy and then the OptiFlow goes into the end of that tubing like so and then you just basically squeeze the tube you squeeze the OptiFlow into the catheter tube it then sort of acts like a bit of pump and suction so it pumps water in sterile water and what comes out as you can see is anything that might be blocking the catheter uh, because of the nature of my surgery, I do have quite mucousy urine, uh, which can block the catheters, especially when you have indwelling catheters. So the OptiFlow just gets rid of all that uh, debris and stuff. Once that's done, I can empty the contents of that used OptiFlow into the sink or toilet, and it can just go in the bin with your normal waste. And then the day bag goes back onto the catheter tubing as normal, uh, making sure the little green tap on the end there is closed so I don't pee all over the floor. So yeah, it's a really easy process. The OptiFlows worked really well with these catheters. I'm having problems at the moment with the intermittent catheters, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. But yeah, it's all really easy. It's pretty painless. It can be a little bit painful if there is a blockage in the tube, but it's not too bad. Next I'm going to show you how I pop on a night bag. So this is the tap part at the end of the normal day bag and this is the bit that the night bag attaches to. So we provided with a stand for the night bag to go on. It just sort of clips together like that. Mine was made by Bard and then the night bags as you can see are much much bigger. This is to hold sort of all the urine you produce overnight so you don't have to keep getting up to empty the bag uh, because a full bag can be quite uncomfortable. It's also got a really long tube to give you a bit more freedom of movement. So it has these couple of holes in the top here. These holes connect to the green sparred stand just behind me there. There's a hole on each side and basically what you do is you force the knobbly bits on the stand through those holes and this is what holds your night bag in place overnight stops you falling over it uh, keeps it uh, so it can be gravity fed because that's how catheters work basically on gravity it's very sciencey uh, so yeah you just pop the knobbly bits through the holes in the bag onto the stand can be a little bit fiddly and then once that's done, uh, you can pop that onto the floor or pop that out of the way for a moment. And then you take the end of the tube, which I have already mentioned is a little bit longer just to give you some freedom of movement when you're in bed. And then you push that nozzle into the tap end of your day bag like this, just goes in like that. And then you make sure the tap is turned on. Uh, if you don't make sure the tap's turned on, no pee is going to go into the night bag and then you're going to be in a little bit of a pickle. And then the night bag just stands on the floor there like that next to the bed so you can get into bed and have a restful night's sleep. The last thing I'm going to talk about is a flip float. Some people use these uh, on the ends of their catheters all the time so they don't have a bag, they have a flip float and then when they need to empty their bladder they turn on the tap and empty their bladder that way without the bag. I had to have one for my checkup. So basically the end of the flip flow goes into the end of the clear catheter tubing. You make sure the tap is off so no pee can comes out and then when you need to you flip the tap and the urine flows out. So there we go. Um, hopefully if a catheter is something that you're looking into, if this is something that you're going to have to have if this is something someone you know is going to have to have hopefully you will have found this video a little bit useful um and hopefully it will put you at ease and you can see how easy it is to manage um it has taken me a little while to get this video out like i said um i had my surgery way back in may and i had the indwelling catheters temporarily for a little while they've now come out and like i said earlier i'm now back to intermittent catheterization as i always was since the age of 15 when i had my first bladder surgery so yeah i'm not gonna lie it is it can be quite 
stressful having catheters some sometimes it can be uncomfortable sometimes it can be painful sometimes i'm not going to lie to you but for the majority of time it is going to make your life a lot easier if you have if you have urological problems catheters can make your life a lot easier they can really help you um and like i said there's a huge amount of choice out there there are a huge amount of different types of catheters different types different ways you can catheterize so there is a lot of patient choice there for you it's really important that if you have to come to one of these decisions that you really talk to your medical professional there are specialist nurses out there there are lots of people that can help you make these decisions and find the best type of catheter for you so it's really important to do that so in the uk if you have an indwelling catheter you don't always have to go into hospital to have that changed when it's due for a change um, there are district nurse led treatment clinics that can do that for you and you'll be in and out within half an hour. Um, if you're housebound, there are district nursing teams that can physically come into your house and do your catheter change for you. So you don't necessarily need to go into hospital every time and have a big procedure. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, again, different methods will apply to different catheters. This is just broadly speaking. Um, if you have problems with your catheter at home uh, there are district nursing teams available uh, if you call NHS 111 they can call your local out of hours doctor's service and things like that can help you if you have any problems so yeah there is a lot of help out there if you have a catheter of some kind so don't panic you won't necessarily be in and out of hospital with it and there is a lot of help and support in the community for you and if you've got any questions for me, drop them below. I'd love to try and help you out if, like I said, if this is something you're thinking about, if this is something you need. Um, if I can help you, I absolutely will. So drop a comment below. And yeah, as always, thank you for watching and I'll be back soon with another video.